hi welcome to my channel and today i have another theater vlog and review video for you so today i am heading to sheffield to the crucible theater to see the hypochondriac which i'm really looking forward to i don't know much about the play um, but i've seen some pictures of the set and um the cast and i've seen a few bits and it looks really good so i'm really excited and really looking forward to it I'm going on my own today fortunately my brother couldn't come with me he usually comes with me when i'm going to sheffield but he wasn't able to come with me today so i'm going on my own but i'm really looking forward to it so i'll probably get back to you now once i'm on my way to sheffield okay so i've just arrived at the tram station just bought my ticket that's 10 minutes till the bacillo tram so i must have just missed one but we'll sit and wait so it's now five past three the tram is just arriving my train's at 3 48 so should have plenty of time to get there yeah i think it should only take a maximum of half an hour on the tram to get to the train station so yeah she'll have about 18 minutes to spare once I get there try and find a part of the tram that's not too busy we'll go here I've just arrived at the train station I've got like 20 minutes I think till the train As I can my train is due from platform 4 in about 18 minutes but there's a lot of people waiting on the platform so i think i'm going to go through and wait so i want to get a seat i'm going to go through now okay so i'm just on the platform now waiting for the train i said there's still 14 minutes yet till it's due so
here so I've now arrived in Sheffield now I need to go and find out what am I going to do about the train home so I need to go and find an information desk somewhere and see what I can do okay so I'm here now I just need to find the information desk ah, I think I found it see what's going to happen about my train home is there anyone at the information desk the rest. Okay, so I've sorted out my train home. I'm gonna have to get the next one. Apparently they've made arrangements for everyone. It was supposed to be on the cross country one to get the northern train, the next northern train. Um fingers crossed it's not late home because it's late home. <laughs> I'm gonna miss the bus, so as fingers crossed it actually doesn't do what it did last week. Last time me and Andrew came and get stuck waiting to get on the platform for 20 minutes. Um, so anyway, that's the plan. Otherwise, we're gonna. The other, other option was to. Um, the kingdom of God is on The other option was to get a refund and buy a ticket for the earlier train, but then I would have had to miss half an hour of the show. So yeah, I'm just gonna get the next one. Hope for the best. Also, I'm gonna film how long it takes me to get to the theatre, just because I wanna. I want to know for next time, see if I can get an earlier train next time. Okay, so as usual, I've come to this where I've been for food before the show, just because it's easier. So my food has arrived already. It literally take, took five minutes, so it came super quick. So as usual, I've just got a buttermilk chicken burger and chips and a Diet Coke. So I think I've got an hour before I need to be at the theatre, so I'm going to eat this slowly and then walk over. Okay, so I've just finished my dinner and now I'm going to head to the theatre. It's quarter past six now. The show starts at seven so by the time I get there you might even be able to go into the auditorium. So yeah, I'm going to walk up now. So I'm just walking up to the theatre now. There's some posters showing other shows that are coming to Sheffield Theatres. Quite a few good ones. <laughs> that one's currently on this week at the Lyceum. I think that's on ne no, next week, the week after. And then Sheffield Theatres have a really good um, 16 to 26 deal. You can get tickets for five pounds, which is amazing. I wish it that, but I was. <laughs> Yeah, more posters for some upcoming shows. I said there's lots of good shows. So I'm going to the Lyceum soon. Treason, I really want to see that. But this is what we're here to see tonight. I'm going to So let's head in.
so just in case you didn't see the Crucible merch in my last video, this is the Crucible merch, so here is the price list. So I really like the pens. I'm always tempted to get a pen. Oh, this, this notebook's really nice actually. Really like that. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, definitely tempted by a pen and a notebook. How much are the pens? Notebook and pen, five pounds. That's not bad actually. Hmm, where do you buy them from? So, if you didn't know, that is a cloakroom in Sheffield Theatres, it's just there by the Playhouse entrance. Okay, so I'm just heading up now. Ooh, so this is the bar. Nice Sheffield Theatre sign, shall I take a picture? I think I'm in this door. Yeah, that door, the orange door. But I'm going to take a picture here. Okay, so this is the bar area up here. Well, it looks like they're just about to open the doors. But anyway, look at here. Here's the bar. So this is my ticket for today. So as you can see, I'm in door, orange door, and I'm on row H662. So let's go in and find my seat. So we're orange door, which is this way. Yeah, orange door. So I'm on row H, 61 and 62, so just here, 61, 62, so I am third row from the back. Okay, so this is the view for my seat, so I'm not going to film much of the set because I'm told you're not allowed to film the set. So I'll now get back to you in the interval. So I just came out of the auditorium just because I am sat on the very end and everyone's going to need to get past me. So I just came out, but it is 5-2 now. So I'm going to head back in. It's going to start in five minutes. Hopefully everyone is now on that row and I can just slot back in at the end. Okay, so it is now the interval and the show is so good, it's so funny and I'm really really enjoying it, definitely recommend it. It's been absolutely hilarious, such a good show. So I'm just going to go and head and get my interval drink and I'll get back to you now at the end of the show. I've just got the interval drink and yeah, I'm just going to drink this and then head back to my seat. So they've got all the awards that uh, the Crucible Fair has won on here. So, lots of awards. It's nice that they've got them all on display to see. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so. Interval is over. I'm going to go and head back to my seat. That's my door down there. So I'm just going to head back now. So the show has finished now. It was so good. Really, really enjoyed that. Definitely recommend it if you can get to Sheffield Theatres. Now I've got an hour till my train. Um, so I'm going to slowly walk to the train station. And I'll say I'll give you a full review of the show when I get home. So there's the theatre. It looks so nice all lit up. So I'm going to head for my train now. Okay, so I'm now going to have to get the 10.46 train. I was supposed to get the 10.11 train, but I've got cancelled. But it says on my board, and so transport and tickets are valid on that server. So, yeah, platform 7, I've got an hour. So I'm just walking up to the platform now. I'm on platform 7, which 
is at the top. I think I've been on platform seven four. I've been on platform six, but yeah, it should just be up here. There we go. Platform seven's down here. I think it's next to platform six. Well, six seven. It should be. But yeah, it's down here. I've still got like half an hour till it's due though, so still a long wait. Okay, this is platform seven straight up. We sit at this, that side. Yes, yeah, so it's this platform. I don't think I've ever got a train from this one. It's usually 6A or 8A, I think the last time I got from. And today it's platform 7. So, just going to sit on the chair and wait. So, I've still got half an hour. So. myself a Twix from the shop so I can eat while I'm waiting because I'm actually quite hungry now and obviously I'm not going to get home at all gone one if I'm lucky so I'm going to wait this while I'm waiting I was going to wait on the train but I'm not just eating now so this is the train I wonder if I'll be able to get on it Okay, so I'm at the Met station. This one in four minutes. So I'm get that, get off at Piccadilly Gardens. And I should catch my half past bus because it's 12 minutes past. It takes two minutes on the tram, so yeah, it should be fine. As long as the half past bus turns up because on one thing it says it, there isn't a half bus, the half past another thing says there is. Fingers crossed it does actually turn up. I think my tram is coming. Piccadilly Gardens. I could get it to Trafford Bar and then get a bus, but I'm easier to just get it from Piccadilly Gardens and then. This is going to be my boss. Hi, so it is now five past one. I've just got home. A lot later than expected. I think if I got the other train, I should have been back by probably about midnight. So it's probably about an hour later. I might even have been at home earlier than that. I don't know, but I'm at least an hour later than i expected to be home but i'm home now luckily my train was on time and i was able to get my bus quite easily i didn't want to have to walk it was raining so i didn't really want to have to walk all the way from the train station to piccadilly garden so luckily there was a tram due so i just jumped on the tram because i paid for my tram ticket so I, I got a day ticket so i could get home so I thought, well, I've paid for this ticket, so I'm going to use it. So I, I got on the tram. It's only one stop. It just took two minutes. And then I was able to get on my bus. And the bus took 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Something like that doesn't take very long, especially at this time of night. So, yeah, I am home now. I'm probably going to head to bed in a bit. It takes me a while to wind down. 
um, I wouldn't be able to go straight to sleep so I just need to like wind down for half an hour and then I'll head to bed so I'm not going to review the show now because it's quite late um, I'll review it in the morning the kids will be at school so I will review the show in the morning so I'll get back to you tomorrow hi so it is now the next day so I thought I'd just give you a quick review of the hypochondriac which I went to see at Sheffield's Crucible Theatre. I was kindly invited to the press night for the show which was on Thursday the 5th of October. The show started at 7 o'clock. Um, usually when there's press nights it tends to be 7 o'clock. Um, so it started at 7. The show is 2 hours and 16 minutes long uh, with a 20 minute interval. Uh, act 1 was an hour and 18 minutes and then act 2 was just 38 minutes. So that was the runtime of the show. I was sat on row H, seat 62 uh, for the show and the view was excellent. I think the way uh, the Crucible Theatre is set up, I think you're going to get a good view from most seats. Obviously it's got its first stage and then every, um, and then the seats sort of go up on a really good rake in system. So you tend to get a pretty good view from wherever you sit. Um, I think people tend to like to sit more around the front bit of the stage. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was a great view from that seat. There was no merch for this show. Um, it's Sheffield's Theatre's own production, so we tend not to have any merch. Um, there wasn't a physical program, but there is a digital program which you can get on their website. I'll just bring it up for you, show you that here. So I'll just show you where you can find that in case you want to look at the program. Okay, if you go onto Sheffield Theatre's website, this is the page that comes up, which shows what shows are currently on. So if you click on the hypochondriac, so if you scroll down just before you get to the videos, there is the digital program thing here. If you click on that, it brings up the program for you. Um, so this is a program. It tells you that it's on from Saturday the 30th of September to Saturday the 21st of October. It's got a little welcome thing here. Uh, it tells you a little bit about the show and it also tells you some upcoming shows. It has the cast here. So this is your cast list. It tells you the production team. And then you've got your cast biographies. So you've got Jonathan Ainsclough as Persian. Uh, the main carer to Ill Servant and on stage musical and he's also the on stage musical director. Then we have Zach Gazi Tobati and he plays Clayont and a servant. You've got Chris Hannon, he plays Dr. Delphorus and Raldi. Then you have Edward Hogg, who plays Argon. Zuela Mitchell Dos Santos as Tonette. Jessica Ranson as Belene slash Servant. Sarosia Lily. Renaval as Angelique. Andre Riffig as Bonnefui and Servant and Garmin Rees as Thomas Deforius and Fluorent and Servant. So that's the cast biographies. You've got some information on Roger McGow, who is the person who adapted the play. You've got the creative's biographies. It 
production credits, performer staff, thanks, staff, Sheffield Theatre supporters, and that is your programme. So I just briefly went through that. Like I said, if you want to look at it in more detail, you can just find it on Sheffield Theatre's website. So the Hair for Contract is a play by the 17th century playwright Malheur. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure how high how you pronounce his name, but I think it's that. So it was actually his last play. Um, he was actually starring in the play when he collapsed during his performance. He was playing Argon, the main character, and he collapsed during the performance. He got up and finished the play. But then a few hours later after finishing, he actually ended up dying and it was from tuberculosis. So he already had that disease and yeah, and he died shortly after his performance. So the hypochondria was the last play that he wrote. So the hypochondria which is currently running at Sheffield Crucible Theatre has been adapted for the stage by Roger McGow and he's... Um, adapted this play and he's sort of done it in like rhyming couplets so he's done it in this rhyming way which isn't how the original was which actually I think really works quite well it's quite funny and I quite enjoyed the rhyming aspect of the play so this play has been directed by Sarah Tipple and the play tells the story of Argon he's a wealthy man who believes he is seriously ill but who in fact is actually perfectly healthy so Argon spends most of his time visiting various doctors in the hopes of staving off death so this is very costly from for Argon um, seeing doctors and getting medications is very expensive so he has a plan to try and ease the cost of all this so he wants to marry off his daughter Angelique to the son of a doctor whose name is Thomas Delphorius. However, his current wife is against this idea as she wants Angelique to go to a convent and become a nun. So we discover why his, his current wife wants this. Um, his current wife, who is actually Angelique's stepmother, wants Angelique to go to a convent so that she cannot inherit Argon's wealth when he dies obviously because nuns can't have any wealth wealthy possessions any sort of possessions so then all Argon's money would go to Berlin who is Argon's current wife so Angelique herself is actually against the marriage to Thomas the Forius because she has met and fallen in love with a man named Cleont who she met at a play I think just like three days earlier. So it's up to Argon's servant Toinette and his brother Beraldi, I think that's how you say his name, to try and convince Argon to let Angelique marry for love and also to prove to him that his wife Beline is just out for his money. Um, not only that, they also have to try and convince him that he doesn't need all these prescriptions and doctors and that he is actually healthy. So that is the basic story of the play. So there are just nine cast members in this play and I thought Edward Hogg, who played the lead Argon, was really good. He really got the audience to warm to his character throughout the play, so he became much more warm to his character. But then the play starts off, you thinking he's quite mean, quite nasty um, but by the end of the play you really feel for him and you really want him to get better. I thought Zuela Mitchell de Santos was excellent as the servant Toinette. Um, she had to play sort of a few different roles because Toinette pretends to be an Italian doctor at one point to try and convince Argon that he doesn't need all these medications. And I thought she did an excellent job. She was very funny. Uh, her comic timing was excellent. I thought she did a really good job of playing Toinette. I also have to give a little mention to Garmin Rees, who played Thomas the Forius. Um, he was the person Argon wanted uh, his 
daughter Angelique to marry and he was hilarious his facial expressions alone were so funny and I just thought he did such a good job um he really made that character laugh out loud funny really enjoyed his performance of Thomas Deforia. So the set and costumes for the Hypochondriac were designed by Colin Richmond and the set was absolutely stunning. It was an excellent set. It was a simple set, it was a static set, there was no moving parts to it um, but it was full of props and it just looked beautiful, it was absolutely stunning. I really, really enjoyed the set. So they sort of made it look like a library that had sort of decayed and come decrepit. Um, it was just full of stuff, stuff scattered everywhere. There's all little apothecary jars all around the edge of the, of the stage with books and papers everywhere. There was loads of shells which had like um, medical instruments and books and all sorts. There was also a full skeleton that was hanging from the ceiling. Um, lots of things. There was a desk which was full of papers which was supposed to have been uh, medical bills. There was like a piano type thing. Um, on set as well and yeah it just looked like uh, it was would have been a beautiful library at one point but as Argon's mind has become more troubled um, you can see how he has let um, let the library fall into decay and yeah it just looked like a really beautiful set hopefully I will put a picture in or something of the set I was asked not to film the set in too much detail because they want to keep it like a surprise so I have just took a very quick shot from where I was I didn't go in and show you much more of it but the set was beautiful I also loved the colour that they used they used this really gorgeous green colour with hints of gold and I thought it stood out really well it also had like a checkered floor which was green and white. I just thought it's beautiful. Really stood out really well. And you could see a lot of thought had gone into it. And I just thought it was a stunning, stunning set. Again, with the costumes, the costumes were beautiful. They were very elegant, very opulent, beautiful colour palette, really bright and colourful. And it was like proper period costumes. Um, really beautiful. They'd, created them from scratch and yeah the costumes were just beautiful really enjoyed the costumes and I thought they also stood out really well against the green background of the set so yeah I thought visually the show was absolutely stunning with the set and the costumes I thought it was visually beautiful um so yeah really enjoyed the set and the costumes uh, they also have added a few songs to the play that I don't think were in it originally um, and they were quite funny, I enjoyed them, thought they were quite witty, um, thought they worked well with the show and they helped move the show along. So yeah, I really enjoyed the songs that were in it. I did think Act 1 was a little long. Um, Act 1 I think was an hour and 18 minutes or something like that. I think I said at the beginning and Act 2 was only like 38 minutes. So I think maybe they could have divided um, the acts a bit better because there was points where in that one which I think would have been okay points to put an interval. I just thought act one sort of dragged a little bit um, and act two moved at a much faster pace so that's the only thing I would say I think maybe they needed to split the show a little bit better. So overall I really enjoyed the play it was really funny it was witty playful it was fun it was bonkers at points it was definitely laugh out loud funny the audience were laughing out loud all the way through the show so they definitely were really enjoying it and like I said the set and the costumes made this a visually stunning show and yeah I really enjoyed it so I would give this show four stars I think it's really good I think it's a great fun night out at the theatre I think yeah if you go you'll definitely have a good laugh um, it is uh, a comedy farce 
and yeah it's that sort of humour so if you like that sort of humour you're going to really love this show so yeah i hope you've enjoyed this little theatre vlog and review um if you do enjoy these sort of videos do uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell you'll be notified when my next videos go up I will have a vlog and review video coming up for Kathy and Stella Emerging Mystery we're going to go and see that at home in Manchester this week so that will be coming up very soon so if you'd like to watch that like I said subscribe and hit the notification bell and you'll be notified when that one goes up so like i said at the beginning the hypercontract is running at the cruise world theater until the 21st of october so there's plenty of time to get some tickets and go and see the show um i will link down below where you can get tickets for the show and where you can find more information for the show as well and yeah i hope you've enjoyed this little vlog if you have please do give it a like don't forget to subscribe and hope to see you again soon Bye.